This is Obsidian note-taking app, which is free and has a cool feature for adding flashcards. It can automatically convert all of these notes to flashcards. It also has a special algorithm in it, which is going to show those flashcards in a proper time so that you don't forget those words very soon. And when it shows those words to you, you can define whether it was easy or good or hard for you to recall that a specific word. And based on that, the algorithm in it is going to show that word in a proper time in the future. It supports both right-to-left and left-to-right languages as well. So let's talk about how to add flashcards and how to use this cool feature in Obsidian from scratch. So for doing so, first of all, we should create a page. So for doing so, I click on this. And for example, let's name it 2024 in English flashcards. That's it. And I should click somewhere in this page. So as you can see, the name has changed. And also, I don't need this tab. So let's close it. So now let's talk about how to add words to this page. First of all, I'm going to talk about the simple but naive approach, and then I'm going to talk about my own approach as well. For example, suppose that you want to add a word, for example, such as apple. So this is the word, and this is going to be one side of the flashcard. And on the other side of the flashcard, for example, you want to put the picture of an apple. So you simply go to Google and for example, you search for apple and for example, you copy this image and in Obsidian, you paste that image. That's it. So if I press enter, you can see we have apple, the word apple and also the picture. But here's a question. Does Obsidian understand that this is a word? No, it cannot understand that this is a word that we are going to add and it is not going to consider this as a flashcard. So we should follow a format. And what that format is, is that you should put a question mark. So you can see everything before this question mark is the front side of the flashcard and everything after this uh, question mark is the back side of the flashcard. So now let's add another word. For doing so, you should press enter on your keyboard. So now you can see we have an empty line and then we are going to add the other word, for example, orange, and then we put a question mark. So it means that everything before this question mark is the front side of the flashcard and everything after this uh, question mark is going to be the back side of the flashcard. So once again, we go to Google and search for orange. And for example, I want to copy this image that sets and I go to Obsidian and I paste this image. Then I press enter. So that's it. You can see we have added two words and you should pay attention to a very important thing and that is this empty line. So actually this empty line is a kind of divider between different words. So as you can see, we have added one word and now we want to add another word. Word. So for doing so, first of all, after adding this word, we should put an empty line and then we can type the other words as well. So actually the divider between different words is that empty line. So as you can see, this is a very simple, but in my opinion, naive approach for adding flashcards. So let's talk about my own system. So first of all, I should put an empty line because I want to add another word. So I should put an empty line and then we can start the next word. So first of all, I should type the word itself. For example, suppose that that word is perennial and then I press enter and I type something like this, which is the pronunciation of this word. As you can see, this is the IPA pronunciation of this word. Now, once again, I press enter and I want to add some examples to my flashcard. So for example, when I was reading a book called the 12 week year, I encountered with this example. And that was the reason I added this word to my flashcard system. So this is actually one of those examples. So once again, I press enter, but also suppose that I want to add some other examples, which I found on different dictionaries. For example, this is another one and this is another one as well. So I press enter again, but as you can see, it is not beautiful. You can see we cannot distinguish these different examples. So in order to make this more beautiful, first of all, I'm going to put my cursor, this blinking thingy in the beginning of each of these examples, and I'm going to type a dash and I'm going to press press the space key on my keyboard. So as you can see, when you add dash and you press enter, it is going to convert that into a bullet. So we are going to do the same thing. We are going, we are going to put this blinking thingy in the beginning of this example. And once again, I'm going to put a dash and also I'm going to press the space key on my keyboard. So as you can see, it has converted this into a bullet. So once again, let's do the same thing for this example as well. So now we have three examples. So that's it. For me, this is the front side of the flashcard. So I want to type the other side of the flashcard. So for doing so, first of all, I should put a question mark and I press enter 
and after this question mark i should type the other side i mean the back side of the flashcard so for example first of all i want to add the persian meaning because my native language is persian so i want to add the persian meaning of this word and then i'm going to add the english definition and once again i press enter and also i myself prefer to add the context which caused me to learn this word for example in this case it is this book the 12 week year book so actually this book caused me to learn this word so that's it actually this is the source this is the resource of this word and once again i press enter and also i myself prefer to add another thing as well i would type something like this added on and then i'm going to type the date of today for example now it is this date as you can see april 27th 2024 but actually there is a better way for adding today's date automatically so let's talk about that so for doing so first of all you should go to settings and then you should go to community plugins and you should click on this browse and here you should search for natural language dates so as you can see this one this is a plugin so click on it and then you should install this plugin as you can see it is installing this plugin and once it has been successfully installed, you should click on this enable button in order to enable this plugin. That's it. Click on this close icon. And then once again, click on this again. And now we can add today's date easily. So for doing so, first of all, let's delete this one. And now we want to add today's date easily. So for, for doing so, first of all, I should type the add sign. And after that, you can see it shows me some options. So for example, if I want to add today's date, I should click on this. And if I want to add, for example, yesterday, the date of yesterday, I should click on this and so on. But also there is another option as well. For example, if I want to add today's date and I don't feel like clicking on those options. So for example, I can type some letters of today, the word today. And after that, you can see the first option which is showing is today. So in order to apply that, I should press enter on my keyboard. That's it. You can see it has applied the first option in that list. So that's pretty much it, but I want to add another thing as well. One of the things that I like is adding ID for each word as well. For example, this is the first word which I'm adding in 2024. So for example, I want to type something like this, ID, Colin, and for example, this is 2024, and this is the first word which I'm learning in 2024. So actually, I want to add an ID for each word as well. Your question is, is it necessary? No, it is not necessary. This is my own system. You can use other th other systems, but this is my own system and I like this kind of format. So for this word, it is, yeah, the ID is 2024, for example, two, and let's add uh, an ID for this one as well. So once again, remember that whatever which is before this question mark, I mean, these things are the front side of the flashcard and whatever which is after this question mark, I mean, these things are the back side of the flashcard. So actually we have talked about how to add words to this page, but now we want to install a plugin. And by doing so, I mean by installing that plugin, Obsidian can understand this format and it is going to convert all of these things into some flashcards. So first of all, we should install that plugin. So for doing so, you should click on this. I mean, you should go to settings and then you should click on community plugins section. And after that, you should click on this button which says browse and here we should search for a spaced repetition which is the name of the plugin and as you can see this is that plugin so you should click on it and once again you should click on install button and you should wait for the installation and after it has been successfully installed you should enable this plugin and you should click on this close button and once again click on it again and now we can see this icon here which is for this plugin which we have installed but if you click on this icon you can see there isn't any words in this page in this plugin and maybe you ask why because you say okay we have added a lot of words so why this plugin cannot recognize these words in my opinion the answer is very clear because you might have millions of pages in your obsidian note-taking app and also inside those pages there might be millions of question marks so it is very obvious that this plugin cannot figure out what are the words in many different pages so it is very obvious that you should not expect that plugin 
to automatically recognize these words out of nowhere. But now maybe you ask, so what we should do? The answer is that you should add a tag. And after that, everything is going to work. So for doing so, first of all, I want to add some empty lines. And maybe you ask, uh, is that necessary? Is that necessary to, for example, have some empty lines, a lot of empty lines? No, it is not to have a lot of empty lines, but I like doing so. But it is not necessary. It is not a must, but I like doing so. Anyway, so we should add a tag at the bottom of this page. Actually, it is not necessary to put it in the bottom of the page. You can put it wherever you want, but I myself prefer to put it in, in the bottom of the page. And for adding tags in Obsidian, you should put a hash symbol, the hash character. And after that, you can type whatever you want. So the name is totally arbitrary. For example, my first name is Sajjad. I can even use my first name for this tag. But for example, I want to use another thing, for example, English vocabs and 2024 because these are some vocabularies there are some voca english vocabularies and i'm adding these things in 2024 that's the reason i'm adding i'm using this name but by the way i should mention that this name is totally arbitrary you can use whatever name you like so after typing this i want to copy this tag so you should copy this tag and after that you should go to settings and here you should click on this community plugins section and you should just scroll down and as you can see this is the name of the plugin which we have installed as paste a repetition so i click on this icon in order to go to settings and now we can see it says flashcard tags and automatically it has added a tag called flashcards but I want to add another tag, which we have just defined. So for doing so, you can see I've put this blinking thingy after this tag. And after that, I press the space key on my keyboard. Remember that I didn't say you should press the enter key. No, I didn't press the enter key. I pressed the space key on my keyboard. So actually we have a space character. And after that, we should paste that tag. That's it. But remember that I didn't press the enter key. I pressed the space key. That's it. So after that, I click on this close icon. And now if I click on this icon, you can see now we have a deck called English Vocabs 2024. And this name comes from this tag. So if you click on it, you can see this is the exact name. This is the exact name and it is exactly the same as that tag. But maybe you ask what is the meaning of these words? So basically this orange one means the total number of words which you have added inside this page and this blue one means the total number of words which are new cards and you haven't specified you haven't determined their status so for example if i click on this you can see it is going to show these words in a random order for example this is the first one and i click show answer and for example suppose that it was hard so i click on this and this is the second one and once again i click on this for example suppose that it was easy and the apple suppose that it was easy as well so now we can see that the blue one i mean the new cards is zero it means that we have specified the status of all of these cards and we don't have any new cards anymore now let's close this so as you can see some stuff like these ones have been added to the bottom of each word and maybe you ask what is the meaning of these things so first of all i should mention that you must not delete these things and you should not care about these things as well because these are the things which that plugin has added below each word because that plugin has a kind of algorithm in it and it is going to show those words i mean these words which you have added in a proper time and in order to show these words to you in a proper time it needs some data and actually the thing that this plugin is adding in the bottom of each word is the data that that plugin needs for further reviews for example you can see that it says the next review is going to be this date and for example for this one the next review is going to be this date and so on so actually these are some data that that plugin needs but you yourself don't need them but remember that you must not delete these things because if you delete these things that plugin cannot show these words in a proper time 
But now let's show my own vault, my own project. And by the way, you may ask, oh, how can we, for example, add these colors to our words and these kinds of things to our flashcards? I will talk about it later, so wait a minute. But before that, if I click on this, you can see I have different, as you can see, I have different decks. I have different pages with different tags. And this is one of the questions that you might ask. You might ask, how can we have different pages with different tags? And I'm going to talk about it, so wait a minute. But now let's talk about, for example, this one. As you can see, yeah, as I've told you, the orange one means the total number of words. But what about this green one? As you can see, it says 26. It means, uh, because as you know, I've added a lot of words in the previous days and previous months. But today, the due date of the uh, the due date of twenty six words is today, and that is the reason you can see twenty six, and this green one means there are twenty six uh, words, which their due date is today. And if I click on it, I can, uh, you know, I can uh, review these things and so on. So anyway, let's close this. So now let's talk about the different questions that you might raise. And the first one is how we can have different decks, how we can have different pages, I mean, for different flashcards. So in order to do so, first of all, I should create another page. And for example, let's name this 2024. And for example, Arabic flashcards. That said, I click somewhere inside this page so that the name changes. And then for example, suppose that I want to add a word like this, as you can see, it's a, uh, it's an Arabic word. By the way, my native language is not Arabic. My native language is Persian. So that's it. And as I've told you, in order to uh, introduce this page to this plugin, it should add a tag as well. So let's add a tag. And for example, let's name it, for example, Arabic vocabs 2024. And that's it and let's copy this one and go to settings and here as you can see it says flashcard tags so once again i should uh click here and put this blinking thingy at the end of this tag and i should press the space key on my keyboard and now i paste that tag that's it i close this window and now if i click on this icon now we can see we have another page as well we have another deck as well okay now let's close this and i want to talk about some stuff first of all let's talk about this symbol i use this symbol let me explain in this english flashcards so if you remember i've told you that i learned this word when i was reading this book and in that book there is a sentence like this and actually this sentence and this book caused me to learn this word so in this case i would put a symbol like this before this sentence in the beginning of this sentence and it shows me that as you can see now i have three examples but the example that caused me to learn this word is this one and this is a symbol which denotes that i add this symbol in the beginning of the example uh, in order to denote that this example caused me to learn this word but now let's talk about the other questions that you might raise and the other one is how to colorize these texts and also how to have for example a color bar like this and so on so this is actually the topic of one of the previous videos which we have talked and we have covered in this obsidian tutorial playlist and this playlist is a step-by-step -step tutorial playlist you can watch uh, that video which is one of the previous videos in this playlist i would uh, put the link of that playlist in the description below and the other question that you might raise is which is actually a kind of objection is that oh it is going to take a lot of time in order to add these words for for example to colorize these texts and these kinds of things it is going to take a lot of time actually it is not going to take a lot of time the reason you are saying this is that you are not aware of a feature in obsidian called templates so for example for my uh, vault if i want to add i have to find a template for myself and i need to uh, press a shortcut on my keyboard and as you can see automatically it inserts a new word a new template and now the only thing that i need to do is to fill this template and that's very easy and i'm going to talk about this feature i mean how to define some templates in obsidian note taking app in the next video of this playlist by the way i should mention that you can find the previous videos of this playlist which is a step-by-step -step tutorial playlist of obsidian note taking app in the description below and if you found this video useful i would really appreciate it if you tap the like button and also don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this thank you and see you in the next video